question. Will a supercharged LS respond to a bigger throttle body? Wah, wah, wah. In this video, we're gonna compare the factory truck throttle body to the larger 102 millimeter fast throttle body on a supercharged 4.8 liter. Thanks to the guys at Mac Daddy Parts, we have our Cadillac supercharger on our 4.8 liter using their adapters. The question is, how will it respond to a bigger throttle body? Now that we've got to see and hear these motors run on the dyno, both in naturally aspirated trim and supercharged trim, we can start taking a look at what happened when we upgraded the throttle body at different power levels. But for the guys just joining that haven't seen parts one and two of these videos, make sure to check those out. That's where we started out with the naturally aspirated motor and then installed the supercharger kit using our adapters from uh, MacDaddyParts.com. And we also uh, did some tuning on it, running it on pump gas in part one. And then in part two, we stepped up to E85 and, and uh, tried to find out how much power we can make with E85 and more timing. But this test is going to show the difference between the throttle bodies. But before we can do that, for guys just joining that haven't seen the other videos, we'll do a quick recap here and then we can jump right into the throttle body testing. So we ran our 4.8 liter naturally aspirated and it was equipped with a stock block, stock crank, Gen 4 rods, JE forged small dome piston. So it had about 10 to one compression. It had a JFR cam in it. It was 595 lift, the 224, 228 degree duration and 112 degree lobe separation angle. And I'm just going to verify that. And we ran it with a stock truck intake. We had Snake Eater Performance 1500 CC injectors, as I had to mention, 7 8 headers, Holly HP management system, and the stock to match the stock truck intake. We had the stock truck throttle body as well. So, run in this manner, naturally aspirated before we put the blower on, it made 401 horsepower and 368 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we installed the Cadillac supercharger. And running, it was running about 11 pounds of boost. This again was with the stock throttle body, with the truck throttle body, the manual one. And we ran it with an inlet tube, a three and a half inch inlet tube running into the back of the blower. You can see the adapter that we've mounted. The back of the blower uh, required an adapter that allowed us to attach the inlet system to that. And then we had another adapter to attach the stock throttle body to it. And we did in, in the video in part one, we showed you what happened when we did some tuning at different timing levels on pump gas. We ended up running about 19 degrees and that's what this is showing here. So run with the blower, it made 503 horsepower and 514 foot pounds with the stock throttle body. So now that we've <laughs> everybody's up to speed, we can go ahead and take a look and see what happened when we tested the throttle body. And in this case, we're testing the stock truck throttle body versus a 102 millimeter fast throttle body at two different power levels. So let's check that out. Now that we've taken a look at the power output, both of our naturally aspirated 4.8 liter, and then what happened after we installed that Cadillac supercharger with the adapters, we can take a look now at what happens when we change the throttle body size. Now throttle body size is very important because it introduces the airflow into the motor. If it's not small enough to flow the amount of air required for the power output of the combination, then you'll see a loss in power. Now on a supercharge application, this is doubly important because what happens on a positive displacement supercharge application is if you have vacuum between the throttle body and the inlet of the supercharger, meaning the throttle body is too small, you will see a drop in airflow from the blower and a drop in boost. So if you increase the airflow into the blower, you'll see an increase in boost, an increase in airflow, and an increase in power. So think about it this way. In this test, we're running a stock 
truck from a 4.8, a 5.3, or a 6.0. This is an early mechanical throttle body. So we're running that throttle body on a supercharged application. Now, obviously, the GM engineers, when they size this throttle body, they size it for the power output of their production vehicles. So it was not, it would not be a restriction, but they were looking for maximum power anyway. But would you want to put a throttle body designed for a 290, 300, 310 horsepower motor on a motor that's making 500 or 550 or 575? That throttle body is definitely going to be too small. So for this test, we compared that stock truck throttle body against a 102 millimeter fast throttle body and we did it at two different boost levels and we're going to take a look at both of those now we'll start off at the well and i say boost levels actually power levels because we didn't change the pulley we didn't change the boost what we did was change the fuel and the timing and other things that also improve the power output but this first test was run with our stock truck throttle body and the truck throttle body was run using a 3.5 inch section of aluminum tubing if you look at this picture I'll put it up on the back of the blower there's an opening going into the back of the blower now the guys from Mac Daddy Parts made an adapter to bolt to that supercharger then we ran a three and a half inch elbow off of that and then using another adapter mounted the stock truck throttle body to that to that elbow now in looking at that whole situation at that whole inlet system the opening in the blower is bigger than, slightly bigger than the adapter was. The three and a half inch tubing is bigger than the adapter was slightly. And the three and a half inch tubing is definitely bigger than the 78 millimeter throttle body. So in all of this inlet system from the blower all the way out to the throttle body, the 78 millimeter truck throttle body is definitely the limiting restriction. It is the smallest opening of all of that. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't limiting the inlet system with something else other than the throttle body. So this is just basically a direct throttle body test. And here's what happened when we ran this motor with, the, and this is run on 91 pump gas. We ran this thing, it was about 11 pounds with the pulley that we had set up and run with the, with the 78 millimeter throttle body. This thing produced 503 horsepower and 514.6 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we installed the bigger throttle body. It was a 102 millimeter fast throttle body. You can see that we picked up power. Now I can't show you the boost curve because our, our, <laughs> our data gathering on the boost was all jaggedy. Um, something was wrong with the sensor on the dyno, so it wasn't picking up uh, very evenly. It, it was erratic, but we can tell you that there was a slight boost increase judging by the data logging that we had on the Holly. There's a slight boost increase, which is exactly what we would expect from going to a bigger throttle body. It was about uh, two or three tenths of a pound going to the bigger throttle body, putting the 102 millimeter throttle body on there. So the power output with the bigger throttle body jumped to 518 horsepower and 523 foot pounds. Again, remember this was run on uh, pump gas 91. We made no changes to the timing. All we did was make sure that with the bigger throttle body, that the air fuel was exactly the same as it was with the smaller throttle body. So there's no change in the tune just a change in airflow offered by the throttle body. Now let's find out when we tested it on a higher power application run on E85. After running our throttle body test on the pump gas version of our supercharged 4.8 liter with the Cadillac supercharger, we decided to run the same test after we had stepped up to E85. In a series of tests on this 4.8 liter, we wanted to improve the power output, so we didn't have blower pulleys to adjust the boost. So what we wanted to do was change the fuel. We put E85 in, and then the, after that, we tested different levels of ignition timing to find out how the thing would respond to additional timing with the E85. Both the E85 and the timing obviously improved the power output, but so we wanted to run and compare the 78 millimeter throttle body to the 102 millimeter fast throttle body. And so my math guys out there, I'm sure you're already starting to comment, but hey, wait, Richard, the 102 millimeter throttle body is bigger than the three and a half inch inlet and bigger than the adapter and bigger than the opening in the supercharger. And all of that is correct. We use an adapter from a four inch to three and a half adapter, a silicone adapter to run the bigger throttle body and a different mounting plate for the throttle body that I had that I cut off of another intake manifold that I have. But the 102 millimeter throttle body was certainly bigger than all of that. And this goes to show you that the 102 millimeter throttle body was probably no longer the restriction in the system. Whatever the smallest thing was, um, and that's probably the adapter bolted onto the blower. And these are all very, very close. These are within, you know, I don't know, 
a hundred the a uh, hundred thousandths or something there the difference between all of that was not that big but the 102 millimeter throttle body was certainly bigger than all of those other things so i could have run a 90 millimeter millimeter throttle body on the three and a half inch uh tubing section but i didn't have a mechanical one to test at the time all i had was a drive-by wire version and we, we didn't want to try to hook that up so it'd be interesting to find out if we could go down in throttle body size and still make that same amount of power because our restriction was likely somewhere else. Now we may later on in another test open up that back of the throttle body all the way up. If I can go out to four inches with that bolt circle and still make that work, I'm going to try that. We'll open up the back of the blower, put an adapter on it that has a four inch flange, and then run that with a four inch tube to our 102 millimeter throttle body. And that should all improve the flow rate, but that is another test for another time. So let's find out what happened when we ran our throttle body, when we duplicated our throttle body test, comparing the truck throttle body to the 102 millimeter throttle body on our supercharged 4.8 liter. So run with run with E85 and additional timing. We ran the timing all the way up to about 23 degrees on this combination. With the stock throttle body, our supercharged 4.8 liter produced 577.6 horsepower and 578.5 foot-pounds of torque. It's interesting that this combination always seemed to wanted to make about the same horsepower and torque so it was pretty cool it had a good torque curve as you were up near 550 foot pounds even down below 3500 rpm on the supercharged 48 here's what happened when we installed the bigger throttle body you see just like before we had we got some really good gains we saw an in, a slight increase in boost by three or four tenths and we were up at 591 horsepower and as we expected 592 so we had 591 or 590.7 horsepower and 592.1. So, so it varied by just over one, uh, one, one horsepower, one foot pound. So this thing made good power. Torque was over 550 foot pounds all the way down there. All, almost reached 600 foot pounds. And we were, we were getting close to 600 horsepower. It would have been nice to make that. And I think maybe we could have done that with uh, some work on the inlet side into the blower, even with this pulley ratio. And remember, Unlike a lot of tests, we had all of the accessories on this thing. So if we had, if I was able to configure this blower to run by itself with an electric water pump, we probably would have been, you know, over 600 horsepower the way that we normally run it. So when you're comparing the stock NA uh, 4.8 liter, it was run with no accessories and this one was run with accessories. So there's a little bit of a power difference there. But on our throttle body test, bigger throttle body, Definitely a good idea. I think in this application, we probably could have gotten away with a 90 or a 92 millimeter throttle body, given the fact that we're using a three and a half inch inlet. But the 102 millimeter throttle body upgrade definitely worked well on our supercharged application. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, right off the bat, here's the takeaway from this video. Bigger throttle bodies flow more air and that helps you make more power. It really shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that testing a throttle body designed for a 300 horsepower naturally aspirated V8 is kind of too small on a supercharged version and canned version of that same motor making nearly twice that power. That shouldn't come as too much of a surprise, but here are some general guidelines for throttle bodies. First of all, a throttle body size for a 300 horsepower motor is going to be restrictive on a 600 horsepower motor, but here's what typically happens. The throttle body won't be restrictive down low, unless you're making twice as much power as you were when the motor was naturally aspirated. You, you Usually the gains from a throttle body increase with RPM and they increase with the flow needs of the motor. So as you go up in RPM, the motor requires more flow, the throttle body becomes more restrictive, so the greater the power gains come from adding a bigger throttle body, but you're not going to get big gains down low. It might feel like that on a supercharged application because when you have a big throttle body, a small opening all of a sudden says, hey, let's party. And the supercharger says, yeah, let's go. And so it feels like you've added a bunch of power. But when you run these things in a test, a wide open throttle, a change in throttle body size usually adds more power at the top than it does at the bottom. So the next thing is on a positive displacement supercharger, put as big of an opening on that 
supercharger, regardless of who makes it, a Kenny Bell, a Whipple, a TVS, an Eaton, it doesn't matter what supercharger it is. If it's a positive displacement supercharger, make the inlet going into the supercharger, including the opening in the blower, any associated tubing, any throttle body, any air induction system, make all of that as big as you can, and the positive displacement supercharger will thank you for that with more boost and more power. Now, the next thing, guys, are thinking, hey, but what about a centrifugal supercharger or a turbo? The throttle body is less critical on that application. We've made really, 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 and that's a lot of reallys, three really big power on a turbo application with a stock throttle body. The reason for that is you are forcing air through the throttle body and not drawing it through the throttle body. When you're forcing air through it, if you measure the flow rate of a throttle body <laughs> with 28 pounds of boost, the flow rate is dramatic, much more than if you're trying to draw the air through it. So throttle bodies are less critical on blow through applications like a centrifugal supercharger or a turbo than they are on draw through positive displacement or even big inch naturally aspirated combinations. All right, your older guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. More 4.8 Cadillac testing coming up with exhaust.